chromate color. This way, once it's it can be drying while I'm working on these front pieces. Made up a floor pattern, and what I want to do is I put some contact cement on the back of it. As soon as it's sticky, I want to attach some 600 paper so that that'll be the floor. It'll look like a, an anti-grip panel for the floor. Biggest problem with putting a floor in, I don't want any interference with the, with the arrow shaft. I'm just waiting for that to glue to kick off and then I'm going to make up the sides. Now I want to double check again that I haven't changed anything here and everything just fits right in. And what I did, I cut two little dovetail joints in there so I can get a little bit better grip on the epoxy when this goes in here. And I want it to be a really nice press fit. And one of the things that I really, you know, I've had planes where the pilots come loose and the pilot's head is falling off and whatever. So as I go about this, I try to make sure everything is as solid as as can be reasonably. I mean, I want to be able to pick the plane up by the antenna, that kind of thing. Now, before I glue this in, I want to make sure when I drop the canopy on, I have the alignment that I really want. Here's one of those areas I want to have a little bit of black dye in the epoxy in case any of it oozes out. I don't have to uh, look at a big glob anyway. And again, this really helps in establishing, getting a little time. Instead of CA, you can just have some work time here is good. There's no substitute for and you're doing this kind of work, just having a little toothpick, a little bit of dye in the epoxy, it just seems like you get those real nice joints. Again, on the bottom I need to get a joint. Now while the epoxy is drying, I'm going to fit on the canopy to make sure I haven't... Seems like I fit that a thousand times, but if it's wrong, it's really going to look lousy. Okay, I'll just wait for the epoxy to dry. Now the sides. All I need to do is I press a piece of wood down that's oversized and I can actually I probably could trace this right on here with a knife. And then I can make up the sides independently. I'll make each side separately, put whatever detailing I want to on it, and the last thing will be to get the the dashboard pattern made. Now I have a pattern for the side. So first thing I want to do is I want to mark which is the inside, which is the outside. This will be the outside. Yeah, it'd be nice if I had a pen that would write. Because I don't want to get these interchanged. Now with this, I want to look in the books for some little details, but I want to make some little Inside the cockpit there's usually some ribs. There's just scrap wood I'm just using up. This has got a bad piece of grain in it, so you can make up some various little twigs, various dimensions. And this will give me a lot of choices then. 
try to make it as scale as possible. Now what I can do is open this up a bit. And I'll have some various thicknesses that I can work with. See how quick it becomes three-dimensional? All throughout the inside of the cockpit, you see these little triangles, reinforcing triangles. So I wanted to try to simulate some of them, along with the bracing that normally would go inside. The two things that predominate the inside of a cockpit are the little triangle braces and the lightning holes in the aluminum. Okay, next thing I want to do is make up a simulated trim wheel right for right for around here. I've left a little spot for it. Now that's just a little idea of what it looks like. I'm gonna cut this out of balsa wood. A good way to just cut some of these detail parts out, sharpen up a brass tube, go over the XL plate, pad, whatever you want to call it. Actually, I want to go all the way through and let it stick into the... Now, the trick here is just glue one on each side of it, make like a little sandwich. The 64th plywood in the middle to start with. Okay, now I want to cut the plywood away and then sand that all down. Now it just takes just a little bit of time and patience to get this sanded down, but what we have now is the groove, the slot in the middle for the lever on. a little hamburger <laughs> and you can harden this whole thing up with thin CA so that you have a little surface to work with but you have that little slot for the lever arm now you know we can just position this on there and the only thing left to do here is dremel off this extra this is what would stick up outside the cockpit I can't put the arm on until I get all the little detailing done, but one side, I'll trim this off, paint it, let the paint dry, and while it's drying, I'll make up the other side. Pretty much the same thing. Now, of course, the more parts you can paint before you install them, imagine trying to do this through the cockpit and having all kind of things in the way. So part of what I hope you pick up off the video is maybe some sequence of events this paint tends to dry nice and flat, so I'm just making sure I get all, all the areas that I'm not going to be able to get to conveniently. But also, when this goes in, this will give a nice even paint line against the bottom of the floor. That otherwise would be, imagine trying to get that, that line real nice. Okay, now for the other side, I need a big trim wheel. Now on the left side, I want to have this simulated, this trim wheel. What I did, I just basically cut it and sanded it out of eighth inch plywood. And that's about all I'm going to get done today. But we did get the sides done. Some of the detailing done. I have the trim wheel. Just took a parting wheel and cut all those little grooves in it. So we got our work cut out for us tomorrow. Uh, I want to do the riveting work and tomorrow we'll probably get to start the dashboard. Okay, it's a new day and we're ready to try to get another step of this cockpit detailing done. Now today we can just check out the finish on these and that looks pretty good even with only one coat of that model railroading paint. The little pinwheel dried up nice, the little trim wheel. The other side, and that's ready for the lever. So obviously the first step here is to see that all these parts fit in and I don't have to make any little changes on them. But before I want to do that, 
I want to do a little inkline detailing along the walls and around here just to get a look at how this is going to look because once this